You've probably also heard the term by now in Azure around resource groups, and this is one of the major strengths, in my opinion, uh, of Azure is the way they go about organizing their resources. Well, for one, if we look at a resource group and it's indicated by this icon on the top left of the box here, uh, and inside a resource group is essentially where we put our different services. So these could be virtual machines, could be Azure SQL database, could be a web app, could be storage accounts, whatever we decide we want to go in there. And essentially it's a container uh, that we put everything in and we can control security there, but it's also a nice grouping of resources together. And the reason I say this is because when you go ahead and destroy a resource group, you can basically destroy everything inside of there. So this makes you think about how do you plan out your resource groups? What's the appropriate time to create a new one? It's okay to have lots and lots of resource groups. I think people get a little over-concerned about sprawl, but if you've got a good organization strategy around your resource groups, then it's not a big deal. Typically, everything that shares the same application boundary, so if an application lifecycle is the same, uh, you would group that together in the same resource group. You wouldn't typically group, say, your shared services like network infrastructure, Active Directory servers in the same resource group as a new application you're deploying. That new application would go in its own resource group and shared services would go in one. But again, very, very easy way to organize things. So if we look at um, why resource groups, well, one, I said organization. The other one is that easy deprovisioning. So again, we don't want to go through every object one at a time and destroy it. Like we don't want to have to go through and delete every VM, every storage account, everything associated with that app. It's helpful just to be able to say, yep, deleting that entire deployment of resources there. It is a security boundary for role-based access control. So again, we can give people rights at the resource group level. We can give them rights at the subscription level for Azure. Uh, but if say we have an application team, we just want to give them access to their application in the Azure portal. Uh, we can do that through RBAC at the, at the resource group level. And last but not least, our Azure policies that we can apply as well, which is to say, hey, in this resource group, you can only deploy workloads of X size. Uh, and if you try to do it, even though you have the rights to do it, it will stop you and you'll definitely learn more about RBAC and policies as you go through.